G'day folks, welcome to an ICC Queensland Daily Weather Up today, the 11th of the 2nd, 2023. My name is Chris Nitzo, this update brought to you by our major sponsor, TownsvilleSheds.com. Check them out if you're in the market for a shed safe, accredited shed. My goodness, hasn't Tropical Cyclone, well, I wouldn't even call it Tropical Cyclone anymore, I'm not sure why the Bureau are. Uh, hasn't this cyclone weakened significantly in the last 24 hours? It's not even tropical anymore. We can see whatever's left of the circulation is tracking towards a Norfolk Island. Fantastic news for them, the system has weakened significantly. Uh, barely packing Category 2 winds, I suspect, so... Still a cyclone threat though, even though technically not tropical, uh, there is still a threat there of some very strong winds and some rain in that uh, Norfolk Island uh, area for the next uh, 6 to 12 hours. And officially, I think the Bureau are maintaining a cyclone warning for that region. So a wind and rain threat remains for that area. Right, for Queensland, it's all about far north Queensland, looking at the Cape York Peninsula region. Monsoon trough redeveloping today across Cape York, and we're going to see that monsoon become very active as a low-pressure system forms in the Gulf and deepens over the next couple of days. We can see there's about a 90% probability of a low-pressure system forming in the western parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria. That uh, likelihood is that that system will drift slightly east and southeast from its initial formation location, which is around that East Arnhem district. Uh, very difficult to say where that system is going to be moving. We may also see weak circulations forming off the FNQ coast over the next few days, so keep it locked on. We'll let you know how that's going. This low does have some cyclone risk, especially as an easterly surge of winds from the low levels comes in and meets a westerly surge of winds from the monsoon uh, right over the top of the circulation. So there is a chance there that that might gaslight the circulation into becoming a tropical cyclone early to mid next week. Once again, keep it locked on. We'll let you know. Don't forget, we're already speculating on that system in the Gulf and what it may do and what effects it may have at join.ozcyclonechasers.com.au. We generally don't release those things to the public until we've got a much better idea and we can lock them in. But that usually happens only a couple of days out. So if you like a bit of speculation, you like a little bit of crystal ball forecasting, using all of our high-resolution meteorological aids, head over to join.ozcyclonechasers.com.au and help support our work. Right, so clearly the focus of activity today and tomorrow is going to be Cape York Peninsula, but we may see a, a development of quite a bit of squally showers and thunderstorms, not just on the Cape, but potentially the Gulf Country and over the NT side of things as well, as that Gulf's low pressure system forms in the next 24 to 48 hours. We're going to see widespread shower activity possible also around the northeast Cape on the eastern side of the Cape because of the development of the monsoon. Remember, as the monsoon is developing, we're squeezing winds on the south side, but we're also squeezing winds on the north side. The north side squeezing tends to happen offshore, but the south side squeezing can happen right on the coastline. And in fact, when we take a look at the Bureau of Meteorology's rainfall charts, 24 hours to 9 o'clock, we can see that squeezing happening with regards to where the rain is falling. So you can see here north of Cairns, we've seen significant falls. Wyandbeel Valley, 117. Up around Cooktown, 60 mils at the airport. Widespread showers and thunderstorms around the Cape York Peninsula's inland areas. And then as we go up to the north, we've seen Weeper with 52, Sher Giraffe Bay, 65. Uh, and we've seen some squally showers and thunderstorms in this part of the world as the monsoon develops. A stronger westerly component to it. Uh, right, so the expectation here is, as I mentioned, low pressure system forming out here in the western parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria. Uh, a little bit of doubt as to where exactly it moves. It looks as though it's going to be quite slow moving, either east, south uh, or west over the next three or four days. Uh, so not doing too much too quickly, but it may be gradually deepening and developing. Uh, the expectation is widespread potential for rainfall over the next 24 hours across Cape and potentially for some of, that squall some of those squally showers we talked about in the Gulf country. You can see continuation of see all this yellow stuff that's popping up here so that's telling us that these squall lines coming into the gulf of Carp uh, coming into the cape york peninsula region have the potential to produce significant rainfall so localized flash flood threats are quite likely Outside of the deep tropics, the rest of the state is dead boring there is nothing going on here across the rest of the state very dry Getting a little bit warm across southeast, central east regions. The Bureau has also issued a, a heat wave warning for those areas. Uh, not too interested in that, but they, the, the heat will gradually build up over the next couple of days down there. Uh, the big interest area from a wind perspective is the monsoonal northwesterly up there in northwestern coastal Queensland. We can see lots of monsoonal northwesterlies coming through, gusting up to about 25 to 30 knots at times across the TSIs uh, and the northwestern Cape. Just be aware on the south side of that monsoon trough, could be a little bit of an enhancement of the southeasterly as well, as you can see there on your screen. A little bit of enhanced southeasterly developing on the south side of the monsoon 
And then, of course, as that load pushes into the Gulf of Carpentaria over the next few days, over the next 24 to 36, 24 to 48 hours, we're going to see this westerly monsoon surge, and we're going to see this easterly surge, and these surges are going to hit this low, and that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about, the potential for that low being gaslit because of that, and we start to see significant convection developing right around that low circulation, and of course, we'll then need to monitor it for a tropical cyclone potential into early next week. Thanks for watching this update. We'll talk again tomorrow.